Welcome back to another episode of our economy currency series and today we'll be creating two more commands for our bot which is withdraw and deposit. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, here I am in my Visual Studio code. And so before we get started, what I want to do is I want to make a couple of changes to actually our update bank code. So First of all, what I want to do is I want to get rid of this entire thing. So if like the, so it should look something like that and then change this into an if statement. Okay. That's immediately looking a lot better. Now, the second thing that I want to do is over here and now if amount is greater than capacity above return one, we just want to do update wallet or await update wallet, I guess with user pass in user and amount like so and that's pretty much it. if i remember anything else to change in our update bank i will do so oh yeah and over here in our update bank where we set the wallet and the bank we want to remove the wallet entirely so we're just setting the bank because then again this one is just about updating the bank it's nothing to do with updating the wallet or anything like that so we shouldn't actually add that there okay now we can actually get started with our commands so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just create a bot dot command so uh dot command and i'm just gonna slap a five second cooldown on this one just so people don't spam the command and constantly update the database and then we can do async dev withdraw and then we're gonna pass in ctx commands dot context and for a lot of you thinking that a lot of your errors are caused by commands dot context or whatever over here the type hinting they don't cause your um i guess they don't cause any errors it's called type hinting and it's just a better way to write code so it's more readable for future people and now what I'm going to try start off by doing is immediately just copy this line of code and doing ctx.author because we need to grab all of our data for the user. So now that we do that, we can also add a try statement saying amount equals int amount. And over here, what I'm going to do is do something like accept and yes accept value error please add please enter of uh we actually need to do anything there just pass it there you go and so that should basically be it essentially what this is doing is this is making checking if amount is an integer and if it is then it's converting it into an integer the reason we're doing this is because what if they type in something like max or all so we still want to be able to parse through that just like big bots like the ink mirror do now what we want to do is we want to check if it is a string. So if it is, then what we can do is something like type amount, which will grab the type equals equals string. Now if this returns true, then we can do if amount dot lower equals equals max or amount dot lower equals equals all you can add however many search queries you want for this. I'm just going to do max and all because those are the two most frequent ones that come to my head. Amount will equal int bank. So essentially, all this is doing is if uh, whatever the amount is here equals max or all, then it's going to equal to however much is in the bank. Because you want to just withdraw everything inside the bank then at that point. And then we can do else amount equals int amount there we go honestly i don't even think this is necessary but you can add it just in case for the if statement now what i'll add is something to actually you know make this withdrawing happen so i'm going to do bank underscore res equals await update bank and i'm going to pass in the author and then do negative amount so we want to remove however much they want to withdraw and then we're going to do the same thing. So wallet underscore res equals await update underscore wallet. 
TTX to author and then pass an ML. This is the way I configured it. So it's really easy to update and change things as we need to go and it can easily adapt. If bank underscore res equals equals zero or wallet underscore res equals equals zero, then what we can do is, for example, if it returns zero, then no account has been found, so one has been created for you. Please run the command again. Okay, now we can just send an embed and just let them know that basically the amount has been withdrawn successfully. So literally what I'm going to do is I'm going to just call another, um, I guess do another call to the actual function that we wrote up there. And I'm just going to use pretty much the balance, like whatever's written in the balance here. I'm going to pretty much just copy that and then alter some of the code because it's literally that. So instead of doing dot dot dots balance, we can do something like um, amount coins have been withdrew. Right, and then over here, we're going to do new wallet. So their updated wallet and their updated bank. And then lastly, we can just do a ctx.send embed equals em. Very simple. Now, I'm just going to copy this code because this is very similar to a deposit command. We're just going to have to change a couple of variables up. So starting off, we're going to have to name this deposit. I think that was pretty clear. And then over here, this can actually remain the same, but instead of int bank, it's going to be int wallet. And then over here for the bank res and such, we have to add another one. Elif bank underscore res equals equals one. And this is the error code listed over here. If I go here, return one. And that just means they don't have enough capacity in their bank. So we can literally just let them know that. Wait, something like this. You don't have enough storage in your bank. Very simple. And then literally what we can do is for some reason, this is unexpected in bulk. Okay. So now that we have that out of the way, and I still don't know why it's an unexpected indent block. Probably is just like, I guess, a Visual Studio Code error. But with that out of the way, what we're actually able to do is we can, I guess, do a bit more. <coughs> so we also want to make sure that this is proper. This is flipped the other way around. And that should be pretty much it. Here I am in my... um. Discord, I guess, yeah. And as you can see, the bot is actually up. So if I do help, you'll see we have four commands. Balance, beg, deposit, and withdraw. There's, of course, the help one, which just shows that message. So if I show you our balance right now, you'll see that we have 81 in our wallet and 500 in our bank. Just from testing alone, right? I stacked that much up. But you'll see that I'm able to withdraw, right? Some random amount, so 420. Right, and it actually withdrew that. And if you wanted the math just to verify, but it's 80 plus 420 is 500. But now let's say I try to add more than 500 back into the bank, saying something like deposit, uh, something like, I don't know, 501. You don't have enough storage in your bank. But what I can do is something like max. So, yeah, I still don't, which is the entire wallet. And I don't have enough for that, but I can do something like withdraw max and that will withdraw the entire bank. And that's literally it. Super easy. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Until next time, close to go. See ya.